So welcome to my first Q&A session. I'm super excited about this. I wanna thank everyone for the questions. I'll shut you guys all out as I go. I got my nice dress shirt on just in case. Doesn't mean I'm wearing dress pants down below, but that's for me to know and for you to not know. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. First question is from my uncle. He asked me, who is my favorite uncle? Well, I'm not gonna answer that question. I don't wanna start any family drama. I know that a couple of people from the family watch my videos, so not going there, sorry Les. The next question comes from Kevin. He asked me who my all-time favorite Canuck is. I'd probably say Daniel Sedin. At first he wasn't my favorite. I used to like Marcus and Aslan quite a bit, but as Daniel Sedin went about his career, he got better and better, and by the end, he was so good, him and his brother. If you don't know, in the Canucks, there was two twins. In sports, usually like two brothers don't get drafted one after each other, but somehow Canucks got number two and three draft. Uh, I can't remember which year it was, but they got two twins. It's crazy in sports to have two twins on one team, and they ended up being a phenomenal duel. It was so fun to watch, and they just retired, both of them, um, last year. So Daniel Sedin's my favorite Canuck. My next question is from a small YouTuber sort of legend. He's really an inspiring guy. I'm honored that he asked me a question. Life with Vince Lou asks me, what is your favorite dipping sauce? And how many dipping sauces do I have when I have a burger? So I'd say my number one dipping sauce right now would be Chipotle aioli. I love it. I don't really like the type that's like pre-bottled right beside the ketchup in the grocery section. I find it just doesn't have the good flavor, but I like a fresh Chipotle aioli. I either make it myself or at restaurants, they have usually really good ones. So yeah, Chipotle aioli, but when I have burgers and fries and pretty much anything, I like variety. I don't like having just one sauce. I like it all. So my sauce fridge is full at home. And when I'm at Chick-fil-A, I'm the type of guy that'll ask for all sauces. But if I had to narrow it down to one or two, it would be the Chipotle aioli and honey mustard. Honey mustard is incredible. I love it so much. Next question comes from Hey It's Calvin. He asked me, how is Granville Island? So I'm in quarantine right now. Haven't been able to check Granville Island since I got back to Vancouver. But if you don't know, Granville Island is a hot spot for tourists and for locals. It's awesome. It's like a market that has fresh food, fresh meat, good restaurants, um, super chill right on the water. There's seagulls flying. It's right under the Granville Street Bridge. Super awesome place to go check out if you haven't. I have heard that the whole economic situation right now is kind of affecting Gravel Island a little bit. A couple of the vendors and merchants and restaurants had to shut down. Don't quote me on this though, I just heard that. I didn't do some research. I think that's the case, but we'll see. But Gravel Island is a staple. It's awesome in Vancouver, so if you come to Vancouver, check it out. My next question comes from Zoe. She asks how my career path has looked like. So this one's gonna be a little longer. I've been in the same job for five or six years, so I'll rewind all the way to the beginning. Basically, I graduated university and decided to go on like a kind of a long trip in Europe by myself. I did a backpacking experience for about three, four months. And on my trip, you make friends, obviously being by yourself, you meet tons of new people and you talk about home. So I was talking about how I'm gonna go on this trip and then go home and look for a new career, a new job, get that first job out of school. And they gave me a recommendation to apply for my first job on indeed.com. At the time, I didn't even know what Indeed was. Back then, it was kind of normal for some jobs to even be posted on Craigslist. These days, you would never take a job on Craigslist unless you're up to something a little sketchy. But yeah, back in my day, Craigslist was a legitimate way to apply for a job and the, the main sites weren't really known to me yet. So I applied on Indeed and I got an interview in October and I got a second interview in November and I didn't actually get hired till December and then I didn't start my job till January. So I got hired as a business development representative for my company, it's an advertising company and right away I was sent on business trips. My first trip ever was in Saskatoon, in Saskatchewan. It's a lot of pressure, you arrive at an airport, you gotta rent a car and then you have to hit these targets, you have to meet your goal for the trip, you're getting your hotel paid for, you're getting everything paid for, you feel like, oh my God, I have to perform. So um, it was a really nerve wracking trip but I got out of my comfort zone and I ended up doing very well. And after that, I had momentum. I kept going out of the trips and I was traveling around parts of Canada quite often doing business development. And then one day I got offered a position in Toronto to move there for a little bit. I ended up taking the offer and going there. 
and kind of doing my duties over there. Our head office is there. So I had a lot of exposure to the, the higher ups at the company. And while I was there, my old supervisor back in Vancouver actually resigned and it actually opened a door for me. So I was given the opportunity to kind of take over his role. I wasn't given the official position. It was more of like an interim manager role. But yeah, I went back to Vancouver and I started doing his job. And about four months later, they gave me the official manager job and I was so happy. I got a promotion. I was a manager. I was probably only 25 years old. I was like, wow, at my first job, I got a promotion to manager. And now I get to start managing people and hiring people. It sounds easy. You see your boss do it all the time and he makes it look easy. But when it's on you, you have a lot of pressure. You have someone right higher than you that's putting pressure on you. And it really gets you to a new level because you really feel the pressure to perform. So I did that job for a couple of years and really got good at it. And then about two and a half years ago, I got a call one day saying, hey, do you want to move to the US? I was like, wow, the US. At that point, I was already doing trips down to Texas, down to Atlanta and Georgia and even LA. And so they knew I knew the market in the US, so they offered me the position and I decided to take it. I was supposed to move to New York, but it ended up being LA. And I prefer LA because I like the West Coast. I'm more of a West Coast type of guy. And yeah, I've been there for two and a half years now being the director of business development in that area. So just want to put some advice out there that when you're young in your career, you're going to be coming out of school. You're still going to have friends doing all the fun stuff. You're young, vacation plans. And the first time I got an offer to go to Houston, it conflicted with a music festival that I really wanted to go to in British Columbia. We were waiting for it for so long. And I was like, oh my God, what do I do? Go for my job? or go to the music festival, which I went to the year before. And I decide, why not? Go to Houston, never been there before, go there for three weeks, do my job, kill it, and then come back. And I miss the music festival, but I get a different type of experience. So I did that, and I have no regrets. And the thing is, I ended up moving to LA, and I got to go to Coachella, because I live there. So yes, I missed the music festival up north in British Columbia, but I got to go to Coachella. So it's not as easy of a music festival to attend if you're living in Canada. So I just want to say, when you're young and someone asks you to do something and you really don't have a good reason to say no, say yes, say yes every time. Like yes, there's family emergencies and stuff like that. But yeah, try to say yes as much as possible because I became the person that always said yes to things. And obviously they knew when I went somewhere, I got the job done and I was proven. I was really confident in my abilities. So yeah, I was getting calls about going here and there and Georgia and doing all these sorts of things. And over time, I built up kind of a reputation and I became reliable. I became important to the company and now I'm in Los Angeles and I would have never thought that I would have moved down to LA, down to the United States or even live in another country, especially at a young age. So that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm currently in Vancouver visiting family and all that, but yeah, I'm going back to Los Angeles and continuing my role down there. And yeah, if you want me to do another video about my career and any questions, I'm more than willing to help out. I know there's a lot of young grads out there that are kind of stuck because the job market isn't as strong as it used to be. Um, but there's things you can do and the job market will come back. So um, yeah, I'm looking to give advice if anyone wants it. So decide to take this question outside, change up the scenery a bit. Errol asked me, have you ever had an embarrassing moment? I think that's what the question means. Yes, I did. One time I took that dog out to a softball game just to watch and hang out at the field. And every time I went in the field to bat, to play in the outfield, she was barking as loud as possible. I guess there was some kind of separation anxiety and she did not enjoy me playing on the field away from her. I guess she thought I was running from her, but the entire game, barking, barking, barking. Everyone in the game was like, this game is ruined. This dog will not shut up. So I was very embarrassed that day. Not gonna let that happen again. She'll be back later in the video. Next one's from Smarter Than You 3 What do you eat for breakfast? The typical things I eat in the morning are like oatmeal, eggs, smoothie. I don't go for like sugary cereals. I'll eat like special like pancakes on the weekends and stuff. But yeah, my recent go-to has actually been rice cakes with peanut butter and then two eggs. I found a little hack lately because a lot of people have toast for breakfast. I was having toast for breakfast just a couple months ago. And apparently if you have two rice cakes with peanut butter, it's actually the same amount as having one piece of toast. So you actually trick your brain. You're eating two full rice cakes and you think you're eating more 
and you feel full and you enjoy it more because it's a longer meal. So yeah, I've been going with the rice cakes with peanut butter and two eggs and possibly some avocado sometimes. So that's my breakfast and I usually start it between 10 and 11 a.m. Jashim asked me a good one. Love dogs, what type of dogs do you have? Names, breeds, size, weight, age, social security number. Well, I'm gonna go outside and show you my dog, Holly. This is my little puppy, Holly. Hey, Holly. She protects the yard for us. Yep, good job, good job. Yeah. What's your uh, social security number there, buds? Hey, woof. <laughs> yeah, you don't wanna give away your number? Okay, so that's Holly. She chills out here, she loves it. So this little guy right here, his name is Charlie. We got him a couple years ago. What's up? When we took him over, he had a specific diet in the morning. He wanted toast and apples. And my dad woke up one morning and said, why am I making toast for the dog? Like, come on, every day toast? The other dog just gets regular food for dogs. Anyways, we took him off the toast and apple diet. Now, whenever I eat an apple, he goes nuts. He thinks the apple is for him. He starts shaking. It's funny. He's a funny guy. He's kind of annoying. He barks a lot, but yeah, we took him. We took him in. So, unboxing jobs gets the final question today. He asked me, are you planning on getting back to the gym when everything reopens or are you gonna stick with the home workouts? Well, when we all started staying at home very often, I was like, oh my God, my workouts, all my momentum, all my progress is just gonna die. And I actually have been getting in better shape and having better results since this all started, which I can't believe. I really think it does come down to diet and the way I'm eating now is a lot different than I did before. I was eating out way more often and all that because it's so convenient. But yeah, I, I was at Equinox before. I was spending a lot of money. I don't want to say how much because it's kind of embarrassing. And it was good. I was going like six times a week using the classes, using all the facilities. It's kind of like a, my luxury thing. Like I prefer to buy like a cheap car and pay more for gyms and experiences and stuff like that. So to me, I didn't have any regrets spending a lot of money at the gym. But now I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I'm getting a lot of good results with the home equipment. Maybe I just invest in more equipment and kind of build my gym from there. I feel like as long as I'm working from home, I'll do the home workouts. When the gym reopened a couple weeks ago, I definitely didn't go back. I was still doing my home workouts. So now the gyms are closed again in California. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna continue the home stuff until things are like officially safe and then I'll decide then. But yeah, I appreciate you watching this video. Hope you learned a little more about me. If you have any more questions for me, let me know. If there's any topics that I just spoke about that you want me to go into further detail with, feel free to let me know. I'll make another video about it. If you have any more questions for me, feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram or even comment down below. And yeah, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you soon. I'm not making as many videos right now just because I'm out and about. I feel like I don't have my space, but I'll try my best to keep them coming. My name is Adam Bosivia and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. Thank you.